When I started this project in 1990, and the only thing I had at the time, I wanted to build an airboat, so I took a county sign that they'd gotten rid of, and uh, took it and I laid all my parts out on cardboard, folded them all up to where they'd all might fit just right, and then I disassembled those parts and laid it on the aluminum and cut it all out with a jigsaw. I got busy and put it on the shelf and didn't get it back down until last year, which was 2012, 11. And I started on the motor. I had a backpack blower. That's where I got the motor out of. It's a home light motor? No, I can't even remember what the name of it was. Uh, Fran, a Fran or something like that. Okay. It's a good motor. It's like, what, about a 30cc, something like that? Yeah, closer to 50. Oh, is it? Wow, okay. About two and a half horse. Okay, no joke. Yeah, that's bigger than I thought it was. And uh, so I started putting it together. I got a lot of hours in it, but a lot of engineering and figuring, but it all came together quite well. I put uh, stainless steel rigging on it. And uh, ain't no telling how many hours I got in it, but probably 200, believe it or not. No machine shop. Everything's hand done. No special tools. Everything done with a vise and a hammer. Yeah, yeah, see, that's, oh. which is pretty amazing, yeah. <laughs> Makes you appreciate it even more. Yeah. yeah. These uh, rods right here. I had some. That rod right there was 3 8 and I had to turn it down to 5 16 and I did that with a file. Yeah, I couldn't Hand file. filed. Hand filed. I had no. Redneck all the way. I couldn't find the material I needed, so I just had to make it out of what I had. In there and then the O-ring keeps it in place. And then you made the rudders too, right? Like that's not a store-bought item. No, I made them. Took 10 snips and cut them out of aluminum and put a hollow pipe in there, rolled it over, airtight, and then made these to slide in and hold them in place. They look really good too. They're they're full airfoil. I mean, I don't know if you can, yeah. you can see it. They're formed really, really well. And then you got stainless steel washers here, right, for your, yep. to hold that on. And then everything's stainless and aluminum. Did you remount the carburetor, or is that the way the carburetor was in the engine? That's the way it was. Okay. I just had to take the spring out of the butterfly to release where the servo, servo can move it. Tension on it all the time. Right. A lot of a little uh, tweaking. So the only had, thing you, oh, go ahead. Had to make a lot of clamps and brackets to hold electronics and the coil and all that stuff. And then uh -oh. the only thing you really had made then was the, you had the spacer done, right, yep. this the year. The machine shop, I had that made. That was the only thing I had made, and I bought the prop. Yep, and the propeller. How big is the propeller with diameter? 20 by, eight, 22 by 8. 22 by 8? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's turning about 6,500. Yeah, that's bad. I said, how can you? And then you've got <clears throat> all your electronics. You're running, what, two channel right now in the, uh, Tupperware box here with uh, two servos, one running, and they're all push-pull cable, like a real airboat would be, yeah. right? Which is pretty accurate, you know, for what. Uh, yeah, I made like a little a, bracket back here to hold the throttle in place, and I used the same throttle cable that was actually on the weed eater. Oh wow! Okay. It's a heavy duty, it's real nice cable, so I just left it on there. It already had the nut and bolt system to adjust it and all. No reason to change that out, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It worked out real good. I it, did. I went to the hobby shop and bought that cord right there. It's got a brass uh, push pull. Yeah. Steel with a brass coating or something on it. Good deal. And you got the same fuel tank came with the blower. Actually, that's off of a different one. The one that came off of this one here had a couple holes in it. Okay. And I had to change it out. I robbed another one off a of weed eater. Gotcha. Had to drill holes in it to where the holes would fit down and tight mm -hmm. with the fuel lines, but. Yeah, yeah. To take the only way I can mount the front of this thing was to take and bolt this on to get my front mounts here. Okay. And you got where you can adjust the motor up and down for pitch, right? Yeah. Is got that just on the how's that set up? Mm -hmm. So you got that. Yeah. That the rear thing goes up and down. So it's a three-point mount. Yeah. Two in the front, one in the rear. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then you can remove your whole uh, your whole power yeah, assembly basically with what four bolts. Yeah, I can move the whole, just the cage, the whole cage work, right? With four bolts down here and two here, or I okay. can move and then remove the whole stand and all with these four, this one and that one and that one back there. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's pretty good. What do you think you have in it, money wise? Uh, money? Yeah. One, two, about two fifty. Yeah, that's a good deal. No, that really is. Yeah, about two fifty. Yeah, that's great. That really is. That looks good. Yeah, yeah all stainless and aluminum too. It's like a regular real airboat. Yeah. And no, uh, no glow fuel too, nope. which is really cool. No. Nope. You know, regular 90. regular gas. Yeah, non non uh, ethanol. R90. Yeah, definitely smart. Unless you, if you want to run it again at some point, right? right exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, ethanol. And I haven't finished it. This day's just the first time on the water with it, so uh, I'm gonna do a little more. Put some flotation and put a bow on it, maybe. Yeah, with a uh, foam, foam mm -hmm. filled or whatever, so it'll in case you sink it or something like that, it won't go completely down. Right. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, that's uh, that's excellent. That's a the coolest uh, RC airboat I've seen. Anything else you're going to do to it at all? Any other plans? You're going to put a guy in the front or anything like that? Yeah, I was going to put a man in the front with a rubber arm on a stick. As you do it, it looks like he's operating it. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's next year. It's fixing to go on the shelf for a while. Good deal. And all the all the weld, too, you did, uh, all these are MIG welds, too, right? Yeah. Even the stainless was MIG? Yep. So, I'm just kind of get a close-up of that. Not the prettiest aluminum, but that material that I used is they said you can't weld it. Right. But I did. And so it's not real pretty by no means. Yeah, so weld is difficult to weld. Get the right material. And you got good welds here too, and you put the other bands that looks really good. Mm -hmm. And you got your, your side channels cut in for turning too. Mm -hmm. Got all that bent in. Put turning chimes in it. Turning chimes, yeah. And I could see those work. When you get in the turn it leans nice and it kicks, you know. Still I didn't want it to just slide, you know, go fan and that kind of stuff. I thought it would work all right. If I get the place a little bit bigger with flat banks, you know, you can just run it. Because I did all kind of maneuvers out there and it didn't take on the water. Yeah.